Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to another best of five of the KSL SummerSlam. This is a round of 12 between Ragnarok in the bottom right spawning as... Ooh, an interesting build. Spawning as our Red Zerg player and Maru in the top left playing for Team Onside Gaming as our Blue Terran. I think Ragnarok opened up with a... A, a 14 hatch, I think this was. Or like a... It, like all of this was before pool. Or uh, before Overlord, sorry. Like, all of this was real freaking quick. Like, 10, 10 seconds early or so. So, might have been some shenanigans going on there. Um, as we see, well, Maru opening up with a 2 Rex. Pretty much the standard for some of these Terran players. The default build order they, they go to. We saw Beyond do it quite a bit against uh, Scarlet. We just see Beyond do it every single game in general. Maru, he kind of goes back and forth between the openers. Like, sometimes we see this triple reaper shenanigans. Other times we just see a more... Well, an old school build order. I was going to say more standard, but nowadays it's really not that more more standard anymore. I actually think, well, I'm not saying that this is more standard, but it has really made a, a big jump in popularity uh, as of late. These three Reaper build orders are very powerful. And one of the things that people underestimate is how fast that command center still is. Like, this is still a command center that goes down two minutes and ten seconds into the game. So it's really only delayed by, what, 30 seconds or so. It's maybe... You know, 2.6 SCVs. Like, yes, it's it's pretty big, but 2.6 SCVs, that is... You you can fix that. And especially because you have three Reapers, automatically you're already forcing out more and more links out of your opponent. Now, we see that Ragnarok has taken an alternative approach here. Rather than going for links altogether, he said, hey, I'm just going to play four queens, zero links. And he's trying his absolute best here to to make these rotations in time and so far honestly been doing a pretty decent job once again gets bumped once in the face will immediately move back look at his overlord positioning this is actually really working out quite well this is the first time i've seen this particular response out of a zerg player i don't think this is possible on every single map where you can just you know have queens in position for the reapers every single time because usually there's more space in between the two bases and thus there, you, you need more creep over there Creep tumors are now being sent forward. Lairs on the way as well. Gas uh, has mined more than 100 in this. Uh, yeah. Lair, two gases extra. We see um, link speed as well coming in. And this has really dealt no damage. And more importantly, also has dealt no real indirect damage. Like, no links have been produced. This is, this is kind of an inspirational hold here initially out of Ragnarok. Really cool play. I. I haven't quite seen this yet. I wonder how viable this is on other maps. Like I said, the, the 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 defensive rotation on this particular map is so short that it's pro possible that you you're going to be in position every single time. But on other maps, it might be significantly harder. This was real nice, though. There's one transfuse available. Uh, oh, Reaper's gonna jump in right now. Not quite gonna die. And here goes... Uh, well, Reaper Man Maru will take out one drone. Might get a second one. As four queens now moving in position. Uh, two drones will fall. Not a single Reaper has gone down quite yet. Three drones will fall. And so will these two Reapers. But losing three drones this late into the game, of course, isn't as impactful as losing them you know, earlier on. We have this Spire that's going down. So it's going to be a two-base Spire as a follow-up as well. Meanwhile, Maru, what are you doing? Well, he's playing a two-on-one opener with a fast 30C. We have these double e -base as well going down at this moment. Yes, his, his, his drone count or his SCV count is a little bit lower. But overall, I still kind of like his position. Uh, Reaper's going to die as well. I don't mind his position too much. Like, he's going to have a, such a fast third base. Triple mules, of course, are big. You can see it in the mineral count as well. The question now is, is how is your 2-on-1 drop going to do? Like, if your 2-on-1 timing attack is just going to fall flat on its face, I, yeah, I, I have a difficult time imagining him, you know, being very competitive in this game. But if you maybe can snipe a Muta, if you can actually deal some damage, th these are the, the moments where there's a massive difference between the top Terran players and just the players that are slightly lower than that. I always feel like the top Terran players have much better decision making with these first two medevacs and are much better at, at doing stuff with them. And as I say that, Maru decides to stay home. So I guess this is the correct decision if you're playing against two base Spire, but I, it's going to be real hard for him. It really is going to be quite difficult for him. 
It's going to be down 20 supply right now. There is a massive amount of units popping out. We have 30 links. There's 8 more Muras as well. Like, this is huge. Absolutely huge. Poof. This is just an all-in. This is like a Mura all-in. This is, this is a, a three-base, fake third-base Mura all-in. And this is some solid positioning here coming out of Maru. Doesn't quite have the upgrades yet, but Combat Shield helped out so, so much there. Two SCVs go down. As we saw Ragnarok lose a crap ton of links. A bunch of Marines did end up falling as Muta's now rotating over in towards the main base. There is a turret near the production already. So now we see a jump once again into the third, trying to get an SCV. There's four more drones on the way. I think Ragnarok just wanted to all-in this, and now he realizes that he can't kill, or at least he's going to have a difficult time killing. Here we go, one more attempt. Pops over in and doesn't really get anything. His Marines are so quick moving into that little, uh, into that little choke. Once bailing speed finishes, maybe this is more successful, but it's so long away from now. At that point, 1-1 one, one is going to be done. Evo chambers do go down seven minutes into the game. As the muta count continues to grow, we have one, two marines going down. And I think a mine just shot a muta out of the sky. So overall, pretty significant changes or uh, trades here in favor of Maru. It felt so poor in the early game. It really did. But Ragnarok's all-in did not work out. And now he's kind of forced into something else, which he probably doesn't want to be forced into. Uh, marines are being targeted down here that's two marines that end up dying for free and this doesn't look like a whole lot but there's only 18 marines so losing two marines actually kind of a big deal 40 meters out on the map as uh, four more will arrive to the main party if this medevac gets caught that would be kind of big wait how is ragnarok aware of this is he no he's not aware of it he just he knew he was in position oh yeah there we go Two mines getting taken out. Matter of fact, will die as well. This also was an extract, an uh, extraction. This was a <laughs> this was a distraction here coming out of uh, out of Maru to try and move out on the map, saying like, hey, if either you have to take care of my mine drop in your main base, or you're going to have to take care of my main push. It's hard to do both at the same time. But now that Matter of fact has died so early, it actually is kind of easy to do both at the same time. And we have 66 workers already out for Ragnarok, or well, already. We finally have 66 workers out for Ragnarok as Maru opts to go for the 8 racks follow-up. I wonder if this is going to be with Tech Labs. Yeah, so he will start Marauder production fairly early on in this game. As the Mutas are continuing to try and find some damage. But there's too many Marines out at this point. I almost believe it's not entirely viable anymore. Ragnarok's uh, Muta control is very consistent. Like you see, you see Maru trying to catch one or two out. But the Ragnarok is, is constantly paying attention to what is kicking off. 72 drones right now. It's uh, slowly but surely getting up there when it comes to the work account. But this 2-2 two -two timing attack that Maru is setting up is going to be very hard to fight against. Creep is already being denied in the middle of the map. We have a run by that is being set up. That's quite a few banes actually. Like Ragnarok's army is not necessarily very big. His eco is not necessarily crazy good. Best painting count is very high. Now, there are nine mines out. A couple will stay at home, of course, but I wonder how hard it is going to be for Ragnarok to defend this, being down in upgrades. And oh! Almost lost the Muralist there to that 1-1 uh, Marine Force. Here comes the counterattack. I think a lot is going to really depend on how well this counterattack performs. Like, if you kill 60, 70 SCVs and even are remotely close to holding at home. They could be kind of big, but I want to definitely start morphing a couple more bangs, though, buddy. I think that's really important right now. Marines are being taken out at a very high pace. SCV is going down as well. Overlord's now in some trouble. That means he might be supply blocked. That would be very painful. There is still 15 banelings over here. There's no mines really far forward. All the mines are in the far back. And that's the problem. If you lose SCVs, you're forced to kind of go on to creep. Ragnarok hasn't really micro this properly quite yet. The Mutalisk are in the main base as well, so it's full base trade territory over here. More and more links are on the way. Eight overlords in production as well. Here come Banes rolling in. And this is all on creep. There's no mines here at all. A lot of Marines getting taken out, but at the same time, the splits do seem to be good enough that the Marine Corps is, uh, is still there. And GG gets called by Ragnarok. Just doesn't have the supply to get things done. Means that Maru takes game number one.
All right, game number two. We have Ragnarok opening up with a gas into pool, I believe it was. As uh, well, we have the double Reaper Rex once again coming out of Maru. We'll see how successful this is going to be. I'm just really curious what what the Ragnarok's plans are with, with with this crap because this smells like something fishy, you know. This really, this really does smell like something fishy. This is, this is something incredibly fishy. What is this a drone doing? Is he going to pretend to take a third base? Like, he's still mining from this gas as well. I'm not saying it's going to be a, a Rochalin or a Baneling buff, but I have a feeling that it, it might, might just be... Oh, he's going to try and build a bunker here. But this is a, a direction that I haven't quite seen these Terrans take it yet. It's a very late SCV scout just adding in a bunker. But what is the point truly of the bunker one might ask that's a good question here comes the tooling run by well this is a very unfortunate timing because this reaper just finished up surely you'd you think that ragnarok would know this the, the third reaper timing if you're going for a build like this so it's going to rally some of these marines across the map is that the plan here start attacking this hatchery rally a marine across the map and get in the bunker just really focused, like hyper focused right now on taking out this hatch. And we see Ragnarok hyper focused on well, killing his opponent, pretty much. This is real fast here with the metabolic boost. Oh, there we go. Marine barely manages to get in. The SUV probably should be targeted now. Look at this positioning. Oh my god. He thought about this for so long. Um, and it didn't really work out anyway. Uh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be unfortunate honestly <laughs> i it, he did bait out an all-in the problem now is is he aware of the fact that this is an all-in like this is this is like going fishing for sharks with your leg i'm <laughs> not sure how useful this actually was <laughs> guys i got the shark <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's on my leg like piss off like, there's really nothing to defend here. There's no backup bunker, no nothing. There's 18 links out. We have six Banes morphing in as well at the moment. It's gonna burst this depot, surely. I, 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 I'm having a difficult time over here, am I not? I'm having a difficult time. Now comes the quick walls. Not going to be quick enough, though. GG <laughs> gets called. <laughs> as Ragnarok eats Maru whole. And we'll be heading into our third game. Game number three is gonna be played on Neo Humanity. I just freaking love that image of, of Maru sitting there at home, you know, that being a real, just being real happy with himself. It's like, I can't believe this idiot built so many links. And this bunker really did the job well, you know. Oh, send the marine across the map, it got into the bunker, and like 12 links already. This guy's gonna have a sucky freaking ego. <laughs> Looks back at, his, back at his production, and I was like, well, I do have very little units. I wonder what would happen, and then his wall gets freaking busted down. <laughs> Eight bay links. <laughs> it's twenty links stream in. <laughs> it always reminds me of the style that we used to have in Wings of Liberty. So in Wings of Liberty, it was very common in Protoss versus Zerg to open up with uh, what was like a three gate pressure. So you'd basically go on one one base and you'd build three gateways. You would get zealots, you get sentries, and then you start moving on the map. And the, the goal of this thing was to <laughs> just force out units. But what often would happen is that you'd force out units and then you just get caught in the middle of the map and you'd lose your, your army that was supposed to force out the units. <laughs> and I think Protoss players play this for like two or three months and then at some point we're like, yeah, no way anymore. Like if they build like two links extra or four links extra more than they need to defend, they just absolutely kill you because there was no recall back then either. Could it just move across the map? piss off back home you have to walk all the way back <laughs> <laughs> oh no it was so sad oh it was so sad my friends it was so sad well, i think there was no recall at least right i can't remember there ever being recall i think it was on the mothership now i'm starting to second second guess myself which is very weird as well it's wings of liberty for two years two and a half years from 2010 till, oh, till well, Heart of the Swarm came out in 2013, I guess it was. It's a nice little sport that gets thrown down there. Reaper gets blasted as well. So that's all cool. 
supply our reconstitution on the way as well. We have uh, five roaches popping out. Third hatchery coming in. Huh. This is an interesting follow-up here because it's going to be... Wait, is this... Yeah, okay. It's a single banshee without cloak so far. Have this reaper really dealt any serious damage? He has two drones, two links. It only was two reapers total as well this time, rather than the three. So it's just a slightly different build order. As Ragnarok once again with a very aggressive type of play. Now, this is like a, a semi two base all in once more. Similar to how it was in, in game number one, where yes, there is a third base going up, but really the focus is on like a layer tech upgrade or a layer tech unit in this 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 time around it's going to be the roach with the glyo reconstitution and it's just very all in like if if you don't win with this incoming push you lose like it, that's just how it's going to work most likely as uh maru is scouting well, i'm not sure if he's scouting all this he saw this loses a banshee he doesn't seem to be so aware as to what is kicking off Banshee has died, which would have been hugely beneficial to have at home here for our Terran player. Oh my god, it's gonna move out with these two Medivacs as well. It would have been hugely beneficial for Maru to keep those at home. Okay, here we go. It's gonna keep them. There is a tank that has finished. There's a second tank that is now on the way. Combat shield is not going to be done quite yet. Positioning on this seems okay. Seems decent. We get a big stim here. A couple of bows. Reaching this uh, barracks. Don't forget, this is really the only production... If Maru has, if Maru were to lose this production, hey, he's just not going to get more stuff, is he? So this thing is going to die. You see, we now see the tank moving back. What actually happens if, if Ragnarok just kind of hangs around here, takes out this barracks, and then hits in like 35, 30 or 45 seconds from now with way more roaches, and the only thing that Maru will get is perhaps a second tank, but not a single extra marine. Like, don't forget that. There's just literally zero marine production at the moment. Instead, this... What is that? Why... Why is he going back? This felt so committed, so dedicated to this push. I mean, his entire eco was just working towards this one moment, and now he's got it, and he doesn't want to fight. That usually is a very bad call against someone like Maru. If you have an opportunity... Even if it doesn't really look like an opportunity, but if it if it feels like an opportunity, you should probably try and take it. Because if you're investing in an all-in and Maru holds without taking any serious damage, you're not going to be in for a good time. Because at some point he's gonna start dropping, at some point he's gonna start moving across the map, and that's usually the point pretty much immediately where the opponent ends up breaking. These triple Medivex now moving across the map, combat shield halfway done, plus one attack is very close to being done as well. That's actually uh, a pretty significant thing that is happening here. This overlord is gonna get boosted. Poof. Interesting. Drop doesn't quite make it happen. It is 68 workers to 60. Ragnarok is, uh, has a small advantage when it comes to workers. But worker advantages are pretty irrelevant if they're this small. Like, Zerg actually needs more workers in order to properly be ahead, right? We have a hive on the way. Uh, transition most likely going to be into Baneling here as well. Because we see the Baneling speed. Approaches, uh, ooh, wanna trade. Maru says, okay, wanna trade? I can trade. I think this trade is much better for me than it's going to be for you. So... A couple roaches do go down. Maru's gonna pick up and piss off temporarily. More depots being uh, kind of just randomly uh, plopped down as well. I wonder what the the plan here is for Ragnarok. Like, does he have a plan or not? That That's kind of what I want to know. Because it feels like he's trying to stay alive. That's usually not a very good plan. Like, there needs to be something else here. Like, this is a good plan if your opponent is 600 MMR lower than you. But if you're fighting against Maru, I think in Maru's, in the, like, the last 16 series they played, Maru legitimately hasn't lost one of them. There's, like, some crazy stat there. I remember because it, I think it's still the same stat that happened when they played the GSL finals, which Maru ended up winning, what was it, 4-0 or 4-1? It's, like, one of the biggest, the biggest crimes in GSL history is how hard Maru battered Ragnarok in that final. Like, at the end, it legitimately felt he was just trolling. 
like I think the last map there was Cosmic Sapphire and it was just it was just rallying Thors across the map. It's like, not even microing them, it's just just straight up rallying into the opponent's base. It's just losing army after army, which is so far, you know, so far ahead in the macro and his decisions were so good. He pretty much won in the early game already. Is it? That game was actually disgusting. Like that, that entire series was freaking disgusting. Like if you're a Ragnarok fan and you watch that, then that was, yikes. Yeah, it's not pretty. It's uh, Maru once again seems to just be setting up here to, to, to come and collect his victory. He followed this up with an eight rack once again with that heavy Marauder count. He did the same thing in what was it, game number one, and this time. I, I think it's going to work once more. Two blinding clouds. Third one does go down as well. This was an okay beginning of the fight. The problem is, is that the Banelings have now run out. The tanks are still on the back. So that means one player has splashed. The other one doesn't. On top of that, these uh, Marines and Marauders have pretty decent heal as well. With those six medivacs on top of it. And thus, I don't really see a, a viable way here. I don't really see a viable way here for, uh, for Ragnarok for Hulk is. Like, the supplies are really close, but it usually doesn't help. It's, there's too much heal on individual marauders, too much heal on those marines. There's nothing really that can clear this, and the tanks in the back helping out as well. Second factory on the way, we have an orbital on the fort. And so, yeah. Marauders is going to continue rallying across the map now, and I, 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 I just don't think it's possible. I simply do not believe this to be possible. More and more Ravagers being taken out. Ragnarok still wants to try. He says, maybe uh, this game is going to be the one that saves me. But it's not the case. Maru wins game number two, puts himself on match point. So we'll be heading into game number four. And in that game number four, once again, we have the double barracks opener. This time with the three Reapers rather than just with the two. I guess you, you require a little bit more gas for certain builds. And then you can you know kind of decide how many Reapers you want to build. Uh, yesterday I saw Beyond play versus Scarlet, and Beyond opened up with five Reapers in, in one of the games, which also honestly is kind of sick. Like, there's just so many... Th this is why it's such a good build order. Like, I think this is the thing that people often forget, is that... Uh, or an opener, or a build order, whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah, an opener, I guess you could call this. Is really only as good as the amount of options that it gives. Right? If you can only do one thing with a with, a, with, with, with one type of setup and then after a while people are going to be so good against that thing and they can pretty much blindly counter already what's about to come but this this is basically just an early game poke with the three reapers and then you can still do whatever the heck you want as a Terran like that makes this so freaking powerful like there's like I, I saw Beyond play the, like a raven build against Scarlet yesterday and played five reapers as well it, it literally did he did anything that he that, that that he could do, you know. It it was yeah, it was pretty wild. I have to put down the, the scoring over there. Happens to the best. So we have uh <laughs> still on the way over here. Is this going to be pretty like I, I do believe that a, a lot of them are going to go into like some type of two one one. Like it's going to be one version or the other of two one, but once again, it's going to be mixed up all together. So we now have Hellions in production. It's going to be a liberator, so this is not at all what I would have quite expected after seeing a factory with a reactor and a starport this quickly. There is going to be a third CC, but we've also seen a lot of Terran players just kind of follow this up with with some some big two command center aggression. We have four Marines that now start walking across the map with without really anything. No stim, no nothing, no medifex. This feels like it it carries a considerable amount of risk. And he's also going to move back home. Liberator obviously wants to start dealing some damage at some point. I, I, I really wonder what this is going to be. Is he just going to move across the map with like four cars and three reapers and that's it? Is that the plan? Then you swap these two. Look how well this times out all of this. I think it must be really fun for Terran as well. That when you're playing... You know, this, this type of new build order is that there's so many follow-ups that you can still figure out. So every single series, you can kind of, you know, create a new build and, and confuse the Zerg. It, it feels really nice when you have something new in the early game like that. There's, just, there's so many opportunities for you to kind of innovate and to be creative. And I think that's one of the things that that Maru, uh, Gumiho and Bion are pretty good at. It's just like figuring out different follow-ups from a single opener and... 
Uh, yeah, it, it looks quite powerful. Here comes the lip into the main base. Uh, Ragnarok very quick with the responses. I wonder how Maru is going to do it here. He's not target firing drones quite yet. He's going to try and unseage. Is he going to get away? Yes, he will get away. So the double drops now are heading in towards the main base. Liberator could actually start fighting that overlord. So far, hasn't quite yet. This is such a wild build order. Like, he has pretty good map control, and then at the same time, the double drop just starts heading in towards the main. It's like, well, oh my god, he remembered where the Overlord was. He has a brain. He's like the first person in the world that remembers Overlord positions and then tries to actively dodge him. Here we go in towards the main base. Roach is trying to move in position, but oh, he accidentally picked up his uh, medevac there. Actually, a pretty significant error. I think otherwise he might have been capable of maybe fighting these links at least for a little bit longer we have these reaper hellion force on the left side that is now trying to take out some of these queens fort base is going to die perhaps here it's gonna say be in some trouble but this is this is more than just trouble in my mind i think it's just yep it's dead it's gonna lose three four marines for that but that is a worthwhile trade for maru as he's currently on 57 workers against the 66 of ragnarok who is practically all inning right now on three bases like, that is just the reality of things here. He's just going to be all inning on three bases. You have a tank that is being produced. You have two more barracks. This is, yeah, three barracks total already. So it's going to go up to five. We have an armory coming down as well. Th the thing is, so... Even, like... W w there could be a scenario right now where... Ragnarok already was planning on doing this particular all-in. This 1-1 one, one Roach attack. Like, it's completely possible that this was his plan all along. But, because Maru has taken out his opponent's fourth base, right now, it is the only thing that Ragnarok can reasonably do. And Maru should be somewhat aware of that. And that could change the way that he moves. That could change the way that he produces units. The positioning of the tanks. Like, it is super clear right now for me what is going on. And I think it should be super clear for Maru as well. He's still out on the map. I don't think that is a mistake. You could say, well, why aren't these units at home if he's going to be attacked? Well, it's good to have units on the map. It forces your opponent to probably keep more units at home. Uh, and it also allows you to consistently scout to make sure, you know, to just get that double, that triple, that quadruple confirmation that the same thing is still going on. Here come the roaches. So we have... Uh, I mean, this is just a massive scout. And I think at this point, let's see what he's going to do. He's just going to pick up reinforcement with these drops or try to. Look how much it is delaying this push. Now he'll end up going back home. Tanks are in position. We have a full wall that's being constructed. We have a turret in the wall as well. I'm not entirely sure what that is for, but okay. It is what it is. Um, one tank's going to get taken out by Biles. No. Forgot to add an extra Bile in there. That's actually kind of silly. This tank is going to get taken. Okay, two tanks will end up falling. This position is not looking that great for Maru, honestly. It's gonna lose another tank. This tank just barely out of range. That is two reactors worth of production that just got taken out. There's a lot of roaches coming in. Yeah, these tanks, they just need to leapfrog forward a, a tiny tad. Here we go. Biles now are being thrown down. Is this a planetary? No, it's just an orbital that's being built. This tank in the back doesn't quite die. How many kills do we have there? That's six kills and 12 kills. All of these are going to be Roaches or Ravager. It's been a successful tank so far, but is it going to be successful enough as the SCVs have now been pulled off the line? We have continuous worker production. It's these uh, command centers, they now kind of count as just, you know, production for units in general. It's better to have some cannon fodder than to have no cannon fodder. So you're just going to add more SCVs, otherwise you won't be capable of spending his money. Good control here out of Maru. Still has two tanks alive. Uh, Ravager count still fairly high. The Roach count, though, starting to bleed out a little bit. This plus two attack is getting closer and closer to being done, and that is going to be a game changer, 100%. Absolutely a game changer. One big tank shot there on top of those Ravagers. Going to soften them up just a tiny tad. Tanks now moving forward. Liberators moving in position as well. Liberators, of course, not great against this army, but they will bait out a couple of more Biles, which is the one thing you really do want. If you can bait out Biles, that is most of the time going to be pretty good. More Roaches coming in, plus two, 15 seconds away. So I think for the next fight that we will be having, there is going to be plus two. And that would really freaking suck here for Ragnarok. Look at the difference in fight. Oh, here we go. Marines start ripping through those Roaches, uh, just piercing through that armor. And yeah, I, I think this is pretty much... Uh, Adios here for our good friend Ragnarok. Marines going a little bit too far out, perhaps. 
but it's still 71 workers to 65. There's seven drones in production behind all of this. Uh, something is harassing. Seems to me like that's going to be the Liberator. Yep. We'll get taken out. I mean, just seize the lack of drones on that forward base. Has to be so comfortable here for Maru. As he could probably kind of start moving out the moment his production here finishes up. Could also start a plus three attack. Gets a fifth base immediately. So it's going to be up a base against this Zerg opponent. That is never what the Zerg quite wants. Yeah, this is going to be real freaking rough here. Real freaking rough. Thirty marines. That's actually a high tier. Freaking love thirty marines. Plus three attack as well coming in. Two siege tanks. This really is just such a kind of a Maru game. You know, you just scout something, gets a hat, and now he's just gonna play it out. There's two ways he can play it out. He can start attacking across the map with his tanks. Or he can go into like the super the super campy stuff that we often see out of him as well. Uh, so far his mind seems to be on killing stuff. He's been doing a pretty okay job at it as well. So I'm gonna try to drop in towards the, the fourth base. Doesn't quite work out, but this did allow him to completely move out for free. And this is one of the hardest things to do as a Terran player. No run buys, no Ravager stopping you, forcing you to siege up a couple of times on the way there. It's a really big deal generally. So this is what, like nine tanks, ten tanks? Yeah, it's quite a few tanks. Here comes a flank, but there's, there's literally nothing in here. It's down two upgrades right now, Ragnarok, and there's no Bane links, there's no nothing. Tanks absolutely destroying. Like, absolutely destroying. 22 kills on this bad boy. Look at that. Mr. Tank, you've done a good job so far in this game. As the Reaper openers once again uh, are victorious. Big stim. I mean, this game is insanely over. I could pretend like it isn't, but it really is. Not quite sure. Like, I, I just don't see a viable path back for Ragnarok, and I honestly haven't seen one in the past minute or so. Ever since, like, if the, if, an, if a roach attack falls as flat as that one did, usually there's no follow-up possibility. Like, it, it really needs to trade out. Like, even if you kill like 25, 30 workers on a third base, you're often still in a situation where you're just too far behind in tech, and it, it's so difficult to come back into the game, especially against a player like Maru. Like maybe against someone that's more passive, you can do it if, if they're ahead, but not against Maru. So that's going to be it for me today as Maru advances on into the round of eight. We'll continue with the round of 12 tomorrow, of course. Um, and yeah, I'll see all of you uh, hopefully there. Thanks so much for watching and bye-bye.